Hey, did you guys know that I play for a Division Two paintball team? Hey, I'm Marcus. I'm Atrax. And I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. That's right, we are Working Class Nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023, and you can find this 191 podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and anywhere you can find a ga- podcast in the galaxy far, far away. You can also find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Just search for the Working Class Nerds podcast or go to youtube.com slash MarcusB814, click on playlist, click on Working Class Nerds, and boom! Every episode past and present right at your fingertips. You can watch me play video games Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And you can watch me play video games every single Monday night at twitch.tv slash NickVern51. We are all on the social media. I am at MarcusB814. I am Atrax underscore A. And I'm at Nick Byrne. That's what I see Gabe in this week's episode. The boys are back in town. The three of us are all finally back to podcasting together. And we're going to PAX East next week. So we have a lot to catch up on. Speaking of which, Atrax, what have you been up to? Wait. Wait. Nick, are you on the right microphone? I think so. Do I sound terrible? I'm just double you checking. Fine to me. Well, Let's he cons- sounded fine at uh, when we did the show with Ven. So, I, no, I, I just, okay. Well, Ven, Ven should have been able to hear, but he wasn't paying no one, attention. No one needs to hear him anyway, right? To hear me? <laughs> or, oh, no, you, Damn not Ven. Oh, <laughs> what? Him. Whatever. Oh man, that's a good one. Going back to my Division Two paintball team. Yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's so good to have everyone back together well hell yeah speaking of being together uh i'm super excited for pax which is next week literally a week from today we will have already spent pretty much the whole day hanging out with game developers and interviewing them and playing demos and all sorts of stuff like that so oh, yeah. i'm super excited but i have been incredibly overwhelmed with making the schedule I did not realize oh, how many different people would email me. And uh, if you're listening out there and you emailed me and I didn't get back to you, uh, I am sorry. I Sometimes I read them and then like four more pop up and then I can't find the one that I originally read and I spend so much time looking for it, I just give up. Uh, <laughs> Dude, that's so, how I feel too. My, I, I always yeah. clear all my emails and I try not to read the the gaming ones from PAX that say like, Hey, like come to our booth yep. um, so that I can actually sit down and go through it. And like, do I want to, you know, check this out and schedule time or not? So I have like 80 emails, like, under- right. <laughs> well, and then also what we have scheduled, um, communicating with both of you to make sure we don't double schedule stuff, which has already happened. Oh yeah. I, think uh, I, I, I'm I don't sure think you guys- so. I think no, when, it has. We've got. I got an email back saying, "Hey, you're double booked, so we're gonna cancel yours and go hang out, go, like go to Nick's." And I was like, "All right." Oh, yeah, it's Friday yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah. shout out uh, to everybody who has been patient. Thank you very much, and we certainly look forward to seeing you at PAX because there's a lot of cool stuff that I've already looked through. Yeah, I have to make a whole chart. I'll do that this weekend because I don't have paintball. Oh, you're not playing on your Division Two team this weekend. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, no. you know, you need a rest after all the Division Two paintball that you played. Exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> can't wait to hear oh, about it's that Thursday later. Gotcha. Yeah, Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in addition to that, I at so at work, obviously everybody. Well, hopefully you get breaks at work and you take your breaks be, yeah. if you're legally obligated to. Uh, And so then on my breaks, I've been playing old school RuneScape on my phone. Oh, it's it's great on your phone. It is so much fun. I kind of 
bought well not kind of i bought some uh some membership like i think last sometime last week and because my stats are already fairly high from when i used to play uh back in middle school so wait you remember the same login oh yeah dude a hundred percent oh what the hell was my login my account's probably hacked or something at this point I got my wood cutting up from 85 to 87. It took me like, I don't know, 10 hours or something like that. Nice. Just what? just chopping trees. That's the best. Oh, Wait, man. So what's, the, what's the meme phrase from RuneScape? Like 94 is halfway or something like that? Kind of, yeah. I don't know exactly what it is. I think it is 94, though. Because <laughs> it's, I think, 20 million experience total. And I'm right now at level 87 at 4 million experience. That sounds about right. It's because it's like the number amount of experience to go from like 94 to 100 is the same as going from zero to, or one to 94 or something like that. Yeah. It's an insane amount of experience. Yeah. And I Ex- think the last level alone is two and a half million experience or something like that. So it's, That's, it's pretty that, crazy. That is crazy. I remember having a very high fishing skill and being able to like I made a bunch of money because I would fish like sharks and like the the rays or whatever like the really expensive fish. Yeah, I could sell it and like lobster and stuff like that. Oh man, back in back in middle school because I had my school computer. Yeah, I was homeschooled, so I had my school computer and then my computer. So yeah. I ran two accounts at the same time. Oh, and just traded and, it all to one or something. Yeah, well, like one would be fishing while the other was wood cutting. And then one would be smithing while the other was mining or the other way around or nice. all sorts of stuff. Or I'd have both of them killing monsters so that I wouldn't die. Oh, know? nice. Or, yep. Or my favorite one was you'd, you'd bait somebody with, uh, with a lower level character in PvP. And then you have your other higher level one hiding behind like a group of trees or something. <laughs> and then you just bring them around like, surprise! Uh, yep, Gank switch. them. That's funny. Yeah. Oh man, those those were good times. So I've just been just on my lunch break or uh ten minutes, you know, during my ten minute breaks or something like that. I'll sit down and cut some trees or fletch some bows or sell something. And that's, that's nice. been that's been nice. I I've been looking for a mobile game to play for a while, so I'm happy that I found this because a lot of the mobile games are freemium or just in my experience, they're not that fun so i'm really happy that i i was like oh yeah I'll play some old school runescape get back into it all of that good stuff make some money you know sell it I, I don't know whatever you do in runescape it's i'm really happy that they made old school versus the regular runescape because while i don't dislike the regular runescape client old school definitely has well, old school vibes to it. And I don't think it, it's just a unique experience. It has kind of that, uh, uh, retro, well, nostalgia vibe. Yeah. Nostalgia that too, that too, but it's just so calming even in PVP stuff like that. It's, it's really relaxing and calming to play. But, of course, if you're playing relaxing and calming, you got to counter that with something a little bit more stressful. Oh, yeah. So when I come home from work, I've been playing Escape from Tarkov. Ooh, I've never played. And that 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 game is elite gamers only. And yep. I don't even mean like, oh, you have to be really good at aiming. It, I, I don't necessarily think it's aim. It's just you need to understand uh, how to play different play styles. Sometimes you need to be aggressive. Sometimes you need to play a lot more calmly. Then when you go into your menus and you've actually looted all your stuff, you need to be able to manage your inventory, know what to sell, what to keep, yeah, all of that type of stuff, what to upgrade. Um so it's it's definitely just all the different systems nothing is beginner friendly and i don't just mean oh beginner as in you've never played video games before i mean even if you're an experienced gamer it 
I, I'd say it's harder than Dark Souls. I'd argue that it's harder than Dark Souls. It's a I different that. type of hard. Yeah. Well, it there's n- literally nothing is explained. All you have, it's just, okay, here you go. You have a bunch of ammo and guns. You can load in as a scav or a PMC. Here's some traders to trade stuff, buy and sell stuff. That's it. That's all you got. Good luck. Yeah, good, good luck. Oh, you have to click through the menus to figure out there are tasks from the traders that you can then get, and you need to load into certain areas and complete the tasks. And then once the tasks are done, you can get better rep with your traders, which means better prices. You can also buy stuff faster. Um, or, well, they figured, I guess, more stuff. They figured out a way to hook people into a first-person battle royale slash multiplayer game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. like, they've hooked... Like, I had a guy I know... Um, I used to play paintball with. His name was Andrew. And he streams a little bit, like, Crumbles or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, he was so hooked mm-hmm. on the game because, like, once you figure it out... Then it becomes like a grind to get to this like certain level in the season because once you hit that season, you get some ridiculous rewards. But in order to get to that rank in that season, it's insane. And um, every quote unquote season, at the end of it, they wipe and start back to the beginning. Yeah, zero. Yep. Everybody starts on the same, which I I think is a good and a bad thing. I mean, it, it, I guess it just depends on how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Because for beginners, you can just kind of say, "All right, well, I can completely mess up my playthrough, quote unquote playthrough." And as soon as I have a bunch of game knowledge, then the game will wipe, and I can start over, and I have all of this knowledge, and now I can really, you know, make a go of it. Yeah, it's. I think it's just an evolved battle royale style game. Um yeah. it's it's like the MMO battle royale, right? Where kind like of. like there's people that are still playing PUBG and like that game is so outdated now, but people still play it like crazy and that's the only game they play. It's, it's still one of the most popular games on Steam too. Well, wow. that's what I'm saying, but like yeah. you like I feel like you can't even be a new player going into PUBG at this point. Like you but can, you can but be brutal, yeah. right, but you can be a new player coming into Tarkov because yeah, you might die a lot, but like everybody's starting at zero. Yeah. And I will say that my experience has actually been really positive with the community so far. Now everybody else that I've run into says, "Oh, well, you know, beginner's luck cuz a lot of people are rough." And I'm sure that's how it is cuz I mean that's how the game is. But um, basically, for those listeners who don't know what Tarkov is, like Marcus said, Battle Royale style, but you can load into a map, or what's it's a raid, basically, is what it's called. You can load into the raid as either your PMC, which is your main character, where you uh, pick your loot from your stash. You go into the raid with your predetermined loot, you know, you pick your gun, you pick your rig. You pick yeah, your, your loadout. Yeah, your loadout. And then if you die in the raid, all your stuff gets lost. Mm-hmm. But you can exfil from the raid, and then obviously whatever loot you take from the raid, you get to keep in your stash. So you can make money, you can get meds, you can get guns, you can get ammo, you can, like, anything. You can find it in a raid, or you can kill... Um, AI scavs, which are just the AI people that run around. So you can load into a raid with your PMC. That's your loadout. Or you can load into a raid with a scav. And the scav is kind of it's kind of their way to make it easier for a beginner to get into the game. So the scav has no effect on your stash. You don't lose any of your equipment or anything like that if you die in a raid as a scav. But you get a random loadout when you load into a map as a scav. So it could give you like a shotgun or it could just give you a pistol. It could give you a sniper rifle, whatever. And then 
your exfil points are different if you're a scav versus if you're a PMC. And so hmm. the PMC gameplay is kind of kill everybody, kill other PMCs, kill scavs, kill just anybody you want. But for scavs, you will actually lose rep with a certain trader if you kill other player scavs or other AI scavs. So you kind of have to, as a scav, you can't just run in, just kill everything and loot everything and run out. You have to kind of pick your battles and choose, you know, or make some voice lines to be heard so right. that other player scavs know, oh, hey, I'm not going to goon this person because I'll lose the rep for it. So it's it's uh, it's very unique. I actually I recommend the game. I think it's really cool. I think it's a great idea, but I don't recommend it if you tilt very easily on video games or if you uh, don't have the patience to learn a game that is very unforgiving because it explains literally nothing. You have to look up everything yourself. Um, there Sounds are, like Destiny. It's even worse than Destiny because there's no quest markers or nothing. Yeah, they just... Um, it's an open open world yeah battle royale multiplayer and, game. I mean everything like even the healing system, you can't just buy meds. There are certain types of meds that heal certain things. So some meds will only heal light bleeding, some will heal heavy and light bleeding, some will heal uh if you get a fracture, others will just heal health they won't heal anything else and then your limbs all of your different limbs have their own health pool and if your limb loses all of its health then you can't really get it back unless you use a very expensive certain type of healing so it's i mean it is super in depth and incredibly hardcore but it's a lot of fun and uh, i found a couple of people in the community who play and they've been very helpful in carrying me along and i think i'm like uh i think i've made it out of three raids solo now by myself thanks to the community's help so wow shout out yeah shout out to those <laughs> shout out to those individuals and now last bullet point here after my tarkov uh experience the steam spring sale has finally arrived today the 16th all sorts of games on sale nine dollars for tom clancy's division two <laughs> god damn it <laughs> all right but oh, real talk man. that is a like if you like like a duck and cover kind of game like a third person duck and cover the division two and division one story is incredible um, oh, yeah. both games are quality games. I right. like the second one better, but yeah, they're both great games. They're great games. Um, I wouldn't like I, the end game is fucking insane. Um, I started yeah, to no. play it. I just, yeah, you yeah. play those for the journey, not the destination for sure. Yeah. But a couple of highlights for me, tiny Tina's wonderlands half off 30 bucks. That game is awesome. Great addition to the Borderlands series. Big hit in the community, Final Fantasy XIV. If you haven't bought Endwalker already, that is 50% off. So go That's sweep a good up deal. Final Fantasy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Cyber Cyberpunk is half off too, which is kind of cool. Ooh. And that game is fixed. That's what I, I yeah. feel like for yep. 30 bucks, it's like... All right, I'll check that out. You know, I can, yeah, I Nick, can you confirm. should, you should definitely play that game, especially if you really like the Fallout games. Oh yeah, and and The Witcher, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like Sekiro's half off thirty bucks. Another great recommendation uh, in my top ten games of all time, for sure. And then the final one that I am going to say or bring up is they have an insane amount of franchise sales in steam elder scrolls monster hunter warhammer fallout witcher tom clancy for speed 
Final Fantasy, Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Star Wars, Battlefield, Borderlands, Hitman, Halo, Doom, Resident Evil. So if any of those series sound good to you, go hop on Steam and spend your money. I will say I'm looking right now at the store, but I am, I'm pretty sure, is the newest. Can you play the newest Ubisoft games, or is that only on the Ubisoft launcher? I'm pretty Uh, sure you have to download the launcher. No, no, no. I think, uh, no, I'm pretty sure you can't play the new Ubisoft games because they make... uh, they make it so um, that you have to use their thing. And everybody tells me I'm just a crybaby bitch, but like, I don't, I don't want to download another launcher to play your game. And I haven't played any Ubisoft games because of that, because it's not available on steam. When like, I love having one digital store like I haven't logged into my EA one in forever and I haven't logged into most of these things. In, like I have an Epic, but I don't ever use it. I think I played Fortnite once like battle net. I use because that's the only place you can get call of duty. Yeah. And it's fucking dumb. Except now. Well, Modern yeah, Warfare because they're losing money. Steam. Yeah. Yeah. Because people aren't buying it. And I'm sure I'm sure Blizzard is losing a shit ton of money now that World of Warcraft is not in China. Oh, definitely. Well, That's a giant. Apparently, market. according to their claims, what they lost in China is only 2% of their net I, income. I don't, yeah, because they're trying to get acquired by Microsoft. Of course, they're saying that. <clears throat> like, well, I don't believe that, dude. Those motherfuckers mm-hmm. whales. Yeah, I don't believe that either. I feel like I feel like that's just a reported income. Like right. they're doing well, some moving around shell game type of stuff. But there's a reason why they're uh, trying to give be. everybody a level sixty boots to, in America to come play Dragonflight. You know what I mean? Yeah, free weekend. Yeah, like come on, come on. Uh, given a free boost, it's a hundred dollar gift. Because once you have a level sixty boost, yeah, after the free weekend you have to sub, but you already have the max level character. Well, yeah, but you have to buy you well, have yes, one but, max level character, but you, have, you still have to buy everything. But the I point mean, is, it, it it's worked. still, yeah, it worked. I didn't do it, but yeah, yeah, whatever. Anyway, Marcus, how have you been, man? It's been a, I'm trying to have been trying to think of the right word to describe my week from last podcast. Okay. I think there's like two words and they completely contradict each other. One is disappointing and one is amazing. Okay. Um, Elaborate. family life, work life, like just life has been amazing this past week. My gaming life has not. Okay. Um, mm. Like I want to say like this week I had so much fun. In the clan night, like clan night is growing for sure. And that could be because destiny's new expansion. People are excited. People are trying to grind to that max level. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, people are excited about it, but something I found that everybody looks forward to now is in. So in like the last 15 minutes of clan night, we do a private PVP match where like it's Ven and Carmen or Ven and Duft and everybody else against them. And Everybody loves it. Like I bet. everybody who comes, it's just uh, it's just us t- talking shit. And usually, the team with six guys against Ven and whoever we lose. <laughs> and it's actually kind of funny, but at the same right. time, I feel like it's also easier. Like you have to be a better player. I'm trying to think of the right way to say it because I'm not discrediting the Ven team the two people that are going against us. But when you have six people running at you, you kill everybody once at six deaths. We kill you twice. That's two deaths. You know what right. I mean? So like, yeah, it can stack against you. No, for sure. Cause if they kill, mm-hmm. if they kill two people and they die once, 
and we're waiting for them to spawn, the other person could have killed two and they've already got a four stack on their list. Yeah, but like if you if six people attack two people all at once and you get coordinated, they should lose every time. Yeah, but we don't coordinate. We just run a gun. Yeah, that's what happens. So he's not they're not fighting six people. They're fighting right. one and then one and then yes, one and then absolutely. one and then yep. one. So they're yep. winning the one on ones consistently. Yes. Yeah, of course. It makes so, sense that they win. I'm having so much fun with Clan Knight. Like I just feel like I'm really like enjoying it and it's like finding that final like what was clan night missing okay so we all do our pinnacles and it's the same shit every week but now we all look forward to the end of the night where we all group up and do a private match and have a shit ton of fun to do it you know what i mean yeah yeah. yes it doesn't help your gear score or anything like that or your power level but it's just it's just good community fun yeah Mm -hmm. the other thing is um since I stopped playing Swotor full time, I've missed having a raid team, like a real raid team that runs every week. And so this Sunday, uh, I've created a raid team and we have six people, including myself. So five others, and we're going to run every Sunday night. Um, a couple people have raided in the game. Some haven't, and we're going to run it like we used to run the raids in Swotor, we're like, hey, we may not clear this raid this week, but that's okay because we're going to learn it. And here's the next thing. I am going to be teaching them. So it's going to force Ooh. me to be better to teach these raids, and it's going to force me to learn how to do them, which is going to help me long term. What division are you guys playing? Two. Oh, we're going to be <laughs> semi-pro. Okay, like the hard mode or whatever. No, we're going to be like Division 4. Wah, wah. No, it's perfect. That's the like we got to work our way to Division 2. You can't just pick up a paintball gun and be Division 2. No, you got to suck less. You, yeah, you have to eat as many chips and uh salsa. dip as you, salsa you can. And when you tie your pod pack on, your belly flap sticks on top of it, but it looks good in a jersey. Oh you yeah. Gotta, you got to get soaked in paint. You yeah. <laughs> all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, see it's moments like that where i wish we were recording the video <laughs> i'm that's why i do it because you guys <laughs> you guys aren't in there so anyway uh, um yeah. i've been working a lot like the whole like three jobs thing it's it's a lot but yeah. you know i'm getting through it and believe it or not like when i get to game every week i game except this past week has been like a joy and a stress reliever okay um so now to this past week. So as everybody knows, day one rating was happening. And we had a group of people for the most part to go. We had some shit happen, which was fine. And so day one on Friday was out. And what they did, Bungie did this time was they extended it to 48 hours instead of 24. So we were supposed to go in on Saturday morning. Some shit happened. Whatever. We didn't. And that part is on me. So Saturday night, I was building a squad to go. Then I was talking with somebody and they're like, hey, you should come with us. I'm like, all right, I'll come. So we were scheduled to go at like 845 p.m. Which that's, you know, there's always an asterisk next to that. Because like if you're in a run, you're not going to finish. So what happened was is... So we were ready to go, and then they were finishing a run, and it was about 9.15. And I was streaming, and I was just doing, like, regular gaming shit, just in Destiny playing. And we were supposed to go at 9.15. And and at, then I got messaged that, hey, we're going in with this one person who raided with us on Friday who had to leave. Fine, I get it. We're at the last boss. Well, it took them like two and a half hours to clear this boss. Oof. And I legit rough. Yes. I was legit exhausted. Kind of crank. Well, I was definitely cranky. And so I went to bed. Like I shut down stream. I left my computer on, but I was like, I'm going to lay down. I'm I'm pooped. 
And then, so about 11-ish or so, it was after 11, I got a message that said, hey, you ready? And I said, sure. So I got out of bed and we went into the raid. And everything was fine. We were learning and everything was going fine. But then at daylight savings time, it went from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Yep. And yeah. And I didn't say nothing, but then the raid was over. And I was super disappointed because I feel like we had a groove. And I wasn't expecting to just walk away. And I feel like I, I don't want to want to say the word shafted because that's not the word. You know what I mean? Because I'm not a crybaby. I was disappointed as fuck. And it. Yeah. Like, I was super disappointed because, like, I worked so hard and, like, some shit happened. Sure. And, like, I could have done it. It's it's my fault. It's my fault that I, I, I dictated my destiny by not controlling my own. Yeah, I get and you. you. We talk about those life lessons and just in life in general. And sometimes you just need to do you. Yeah. And for me, and I know it doesn't. And I'm kind of airing out my dirty laundry, but like I'm not even mad. I'm disappointed in myself because usually, and you guys both know, I'm really a doer, right? Like, I don't ask for help. I don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, I do it. Like, sure, hey, you want to do this? Cool, great. If not, I'll do it myself. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying, like, I'm the best at anything because that's not my point. I'm just saying, like, I was so disappointed that I, I feel like, I try to do so much for everybody and I was just let down. You know what I mean? I understand. That's reasonable. Yeah. And, but here's the thing. Like I went to bed. I was so tired. It was three o'clock in the morning or f- three. It was almost four o'clock in the morning. Anyways, then I had to get up at six to go to work. Right. Like, yeah, mm, but I was yeah. committed to doing this thing. And as the day progressed, I got more and more upset. And yeah, it's like, like, it's one thing to stay up that late and, and like do the, do the raid, but then like to have it cut short because someone else took up, like, because of someone else's schedule, like ate a, away a lot of the time you could have had to play. And right. Like, I, finish, yes. That's yeah. It. Like at that point, like, I wish I was like, I wish I listened to myself <laughs> and just said, fuck it. All right. You're going with other people. I'll just put my own squad together and yeah. not yeah. waited. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? It's my fault. Like I should have listened to myself and, but like my disappointment level was at like a thousand. Like I legit, I didn't stream Sunday. I wanted no part of Twitch on Monday and believe it or not, I wasn't. And I actually announced it in the, in the discord that I wasn't going to stream Tuesday because I was fucking irritated still, but my wife turned it around for me. She's like, suck it the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Like legit, she and like Carrie is not. She is not mega like pro stream or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. she's pro stream, but she's never like. You should definitely do it. Like she's usually like, "Oh, you're gonna take the night off? Cool." You know what I mean? But she's like, mm-hmm. "Why? You took Sunday off. Like, why are you taking another night off? Like, shut up." And I was like, "Oh, uh, okay." So. I I ended up streaming and I ended up having a great night on Tuesday with clan night and streaming and everything. I guess I just learned a valuable lesson and my mind, like my mindset has changed completely. And I'm actually like, you guys are going to laugh and a track's going to roll his eyes, but I'm actually thinking about like, is destiny the game I want to play on stream? Well, that's like, a valid question. Like, <clears throat> Honestly, like, you want to know the truth? Like, I want to play Dead Space. I want to play WWE 2K23. Like, I want to play other games. And honestly, like, maybe I just play Destiny on a Sunday night just to raid. But, like, play different games. And, like, maybe I walk away from streaming. Like, all these things are going on through my head right now. And, like, I know I've talked about that with you guys before, but never like this. And yeah. like, 
I just, I feel like I give so much and I was let down and it's just fucked me up. I, I totally get it. it. You're not getting back what you put into it, you know, but I can't all. hold that, but I have to hold myself accountable for that. Right. Yeah. Like that has nothing to do with anybody else. I'm holding myself accountable because I pour so much in and I, and I don't expect anything. But then I guess if you, when you really need it to, when you really expect something and it doesn't happen, now you second guess everything. Yeah. I, Even yeah, though you I don't totally expect anything, because I don't expect shit. <clears throat> I guess I, I'll tell you, it was a really fucking hard week in the g- gaming and digital space. Yeah. But at the same time now, I'm really looking forward to PAX and like everything coming. And like, I, and then like at the same time, and I know I've rambled for a few minutes. At the same time, I think like, okay, so if I stop streaming, like, does that mean I can go back to focusing more on the podcast and like growing our show like we did in the beginning? And I'm not saying our show isn't in a great place right now because it is, but like doing those things that I love to do for the show, where I feel like the show is taking a little bit of backseat because I don't have as much time to invest and I'm so busy in real life as well. Uh, yeah, I get it. What does Kitty I, say? I'm an alien. <laughs> you are definitely an alien. But I emotionally, I, I kind of draw a lot of parallels to what you're going through with what I went went, went through at the end of last paintball season. Oh, you know Division I mean? three paintball. Yeah, that was Division, Division three paintball. Division three. But like, I'm I'm running a team for a, an organization, right? That's a, like a feeder team. And I'm like never complaining all the above. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. never uh, like players getting taken for the upper team mid season, like losing players off the roster for commitment stuff, um, organizing flights, organizing hotels, houses, all that shit. Like, and I'm also coaching at the same time and like, but also not really having the choice for like roster decisions. So like uh, who we kept on the team or not or whatever. So like then when I was like, okay, like I, I'm not doing this anymore to have the upper organization not be like, Hey, like you're not going to get a lot of playing time, but like come play with us and we'll develop you because like you helped out the team for three years type of thing. That's what I was hoping for and didn't get. So like, it's not the same scenario that you're talking about, but I get that sort of feeling of like you put a lot into it without really an, expecting anything, but like you'd hope to have that repaid a little bit in some capacity. So, and then you don't, it's pretty, it makes you feel pretty fucked up. And like you definitely second guess yourself. So like for me, not to make it the next show, cause I don't mean to steal your, your spotlight, you're but, not. Like, but like the redemptive part, it was me going to Florida and doing well with this other team now yeah. in a higher division. Well, and it's that's like, okay. I can do it. You know what I mean? In and, division and, two, yes. yeah, <laughs> in a higher division. And I yeah. feel the same way, Nick. Like I feel like maybe I should stop asking for help or doing stuff with other people and do stuff with the people who support us in our community. Right? Yeah. There's yeah. people in our community that are fucking amazing people that are there for us through thick and thin. Like we can right now say hi in our Discord, and we're gonna have 15 people say hi back right away. Right. I know. And and I and I need to recognize that and focus on that and care less about other stuff. Yeah, I I totally agree. And I think, um, you know, and honestly, like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I love so many like I I miss gaming to game. Yeah. And not gaming for something specific. Right. Like I did that bonus stream of SWOTOR the other week and I had a, it, I streamed for an hour and a half. It was just bonus and I had a blast doing it. Yeah. Fucking blast. Yeah. But you know, I only have three days a week to play games and why am I investing it into just one? I don't know. I, Cause I love, cause I love the game. Yes, I do love the game, but if I played the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, I would love that fucking game too. Right. If I played yeah. Dead Space, I would hate every minute of my life. But because I'm shitting, would love it. 
So Well, because I'd be shitting bricks, but I love Dead Space. I love the story of it. I love the gameplay. When you get in zero G and all you hear is... And then all of a sudden you hear like a boo. boo and you're like, what the hell? And there's a fucking necromorph like chomping at your neck. Like... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like exactly. Like like <laughs> those that is what I love. Like I loved doing that and I feel like streaming takes that away from you unless you're able to separate yourself. Yeah. And you almost have, you almost have to have like if you're streaming 3 days a week you need to have 5 days a week of availability and the other two you're doing something else. You're doing, Dude, I, you're doing your brain but stuff. that's my Which point. You're, you're like, not going to have, you know. No, I don't because, yeah, like literally, Monday night I'm usually watching your stream, Nick, just fucking around on my computer, chilling. Tuesday stream, Wednesday guys night, Thursday podcast, Friday chilling or playing a video game, Saturday stream, Sunday stream, plus being a dad, plus working fucking three jobs, like it's it's a lot. It's a ton. Yeah. And and all of this is coming up just because I was disappointed and I'm reflecting. Yeah, we get it. Anyways, so Nick, what's yeah. it like okay. playing on a division two to a division two paintball team in a national event? This it's awesome, first of all. But the, we should call this episode Division Two Paintball Team Part Two or something like that. Division Two Part Two. It's a lot of, the, of that joke just repeating. but I, Or maybe like Division 3, no mo. <laughs> yeah, we, we can all chat about it after. But okay, so for context, I'll, I'm going to explain this or, more. I, or wait, 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 wait. Or the episode could be called, I want some fried chicken. So, <laughs> <laughs> KFC. Uh, that's a finger that's a good licking one. good. That is an inside joke from the pre-show that you that's, will not hear. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so, yeah. I, so really quick, it, Division Two. Yes, Division Two. <laughs> All right, I'm done. What's right, it, so- lo- dude? Wait, how good is Division Two? So, paintball is it Division Two quality? I yes. think it's better than Division Three, <laughs> and a lot better than Division Four. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> in case you're completely lost and don't know anything about paintball, which is completely reasonable, <clears throat> paintball has skill, like, it's a team sport, but it has skill ranking based on, like, your skill level and, like, your experience. So it goes from professional is obviously the top, then it's semi-pro, then division two, division three, division four, division five, then there's beginner. So... The real tournament, most of people that play tournament paintball or competitive paintball, as I call it, is are in like division three or four. Mostly four is like people who start off. And then, so I'm playing in division two, which is kind of, it's not a big deal, but it's like double A baseball. It's like you're clearly not a pro, but like you're pretty damn good at baseball. You know what I mean? So you're like, you're like platinum. If there's like diamond and then something else. Yeah, like diamond and then challenger or whatever exactly so like division three would be like gold division four like silver and then bronze would be like five or beginner or something but yeah um so like so yeah that's a good way to put it so when we say division two it's kind of there's not that many people that play division two like for for reference at world cup there was 25 division two teams registered and world cup is the biggest paintball tournament of the year meanwhile there was like 60 something division three teams so this is talking about like there's fewer and fewer people, and then semi pro there was like around twenty, and then pro is capped at twenty always. And the top semi pro team um, goes up into the pro division, and then the bottom pro team gets relegated out to semi pro. But um, kind of like Premier League soccer. <clears throat> so yes, we pl- I played Division Two. This is my first Division Two event. Um, I played. My notes say, yes, it's Division 2. Yes, I played on a paintball team. And yes, it was a Division 2 paintball team called Malicious. Um, a Malicious Division 2 paintball team. Yes, formerly called Malicious Intent, but we thought that was a little bit too on the nose for, like, I don't know, for, for the refs, you know? Because we definitely overshoot the shit out of people. Um, <laughs> but it was awesome. We rented a house. Um, if you've 
played this event or vacationed in Disney, we typically there's a lot of houses in this area um, near Orlando and the, the tournaments in Kissimmee, Florida. Um, there's an area called champions gate. That's basically like a whole town of just these like rental house neighborhoods where it's just rental houses pretty much or timeshares. And like, it's really a lot of the paintball teams stay in that area because the houses are like nine, 10 bedrooms. Like the one I rented for world cup was one is, was in that area had nine bedrooms giant like theater room it was awesome but the problem is that one strip there's like one big main highway that goes from like disney area slash the field um that we play at the field's not in disney it's just like on the way but it's the same strip so there's one big main road that goes from that champions gate resort area or you know housing area to the paintball field and or disney so like if there's if you're going to your matches early in the morning at like six in the morning and there's no traffic, it's like a twelve minute drive to the field and it's great. But at coming back, it can be like an hour or more because of the traffic. Because there's like Florida, Florida people drive like crazy and they're just terrible drivers. It just like don't and look there's at the a road. ton of them mixed. And, with they can't be worse none. than New Yorkers. Well, yeah, New Yorkers drive crazy, but they don't crash. Like Florida people just like run into a stop sign because they like are dumb. I you know I had, it's like it's a different style of bad driving. My experience in Ubers in California, I wouldn't necessarily call them bad drivers because some of the things that they pull off, there's no way that a bad driver could do that. That's what but I mean. The entire time I'm sitting in the back seat, I'm like, ah, we're gonna hit that bus. No, we're gonna hit this car. Oh wait, you're just gonna like randomly merge here? Come on, what's going on here? Like people, it's crazy. Right. They just drive. That's see, that's what I'm referring to. Like you have to be. That's like New York, Boston driving. Like you're cutting people off. Everyone's cutting each other off. It's a little bit. It's chaos in that way. But everyone's like actively laser focused on the driving. Versus yeah. like in Florida, I feel like people are just like. Ooh, palm trees, blue skies, la, 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 la. Like, not, like, paying attention at all and just, like, that's what's terrible. Like, blowing through stop signs, like, that kind of thing. So there's always accidents on that road. I think when I went to World Cup, there was an accident every single night I was there for all five nights on that that one road. And it's a straight highway. How do you fuck that up? (laughs) It's not like it's on ramps and off ramps. Yeah, so that's kind of my first. Yeah. Want me to tell you how that can happen? Yeah, go ahead. Two words. Flow, rider. But, yeah, it's just Florida. Yeah. Well, all- I will say, if it's straight, like if, if I know that the highway is just like for 10 miles, it's just going to be flat, I'm going to be straight. I'm not going to focus nearly as much or subconsciously I'm not going to yeah. focus on the driving nearly as much as if it's like a super windy, curvy highway. Oh, totally. Yeah. Th- then I'm laser focused. So right. I can see how that would happen. But yeah, people in Florida are crazy. It's yeah, the drivers, and it's also, anyway. Definitely. And it also has a lot to do with it. There's a lot of vacation people there, too. So it's all like out of town folks and things like that. Mix it yeah. with the locals and everything. Whoa, that's some sweet Thrawn artwork. Swotol They're saying Empire. that. Remember how the Empire? Hold on, spoilers for Episode Three of The Mandalorian. No, they're saying how like the Empire is oh. going into the First Order. Yeah, like it's in that in between period. They're saying that Thrawn's going to show up in Mando, and that's not confirmed. That's just a rumor. Yeah, that's the that's the the rumor is that the Tie interceptors. <laughs> That attacked. This is spoilers for episode three. If you haven't seen it, Atrex, have you seen episode three? No, but I don't. I'm not worried about it. Okay, about spoilers. Anyway, the 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 tie interceptors that like how there's a shitload of them. They're mm-hmm. like, and they make the comment like, "What Imperial warlord has that many ships or a fleet this big?" The answer is Grand Admiral Thrawn. Like Thrawn would have the dopest of the dope still. So right. I Moving think on. I think I think that was Thrawn. But um, we'll probably see him later. But moving on, the whole was I finished talking? So, anyways, we did not stay in Champions Gate. It was we stayed like six minutes from the field. It was fantastic. Totally, it was a new development of all these rental homes. It was like five bedroom, I think, or something. Everyone either had a nice couch set up or bedroom. I had a bed. I actually had the the Baby Yoda room, 
It was both yes. decorated with Grogu. It was epic. It was, I saw it. It was pretty sweet. Um, and yeah, so we went to rented a house, went to Hibachi. We made Sunday in the tournament, aka that means we made the playoffs. Um, so in Division Two, if you make the playoffs, you're gonna to get to the finals. It's four matches total. So it's Ocho finals, um, then the quarterfinals, then semis and finals. So Ocho finals, we beat the team pretty handily. We beat them like five to one. Um, and then we lost in the quarterfinals in triple overtime. So in paintball, you have your regular match time, which is 15 minutes in division two. Um, then you have one point. So one five V five go as overtime with a five minute time cap. And we took it down to the time limit ran out. It was still, we didn't kill it. You know, neither team hit the buzzer. So then it goes to one-on-ones. So the first one-on-one, we send out our, our best one-on-one guy, uh, Harry Stanton, who has played professional previously. Um, and he ended up trading with the other guy. Then the second one-on-one, we sent out our next best guy, Tommy Greenleaf, who does one-on-ones in practice every single day, one-on-ones against local pros, very good at one-on-ones. He ends up bouncing the guy, and the other guy shot him. So, like, they both shot each other, but our guy's paintball bounced, and the other guy's broke, so our guy was out. And that's that's how we lost. So it was like, damn, we almost made top four, but we ended up taking sixth place overall, which is pretty darn good for our first event in a higher division as a new as a team. So that was pretty awesome. I was just happy to make Sunday at all, and to get as far as we did um, was, was just icing on the cake. It was just gravy. So super, super happy with that. Um, honestly, I haven't really been gaming because I've been in, I've been away. So I went to, since for last week, I left Wednesday, like afternoon at like 2 PM. And then I was in Florida the whole time. I didn't really game while I was down there because paintball stuff. And then Monday I flew back my, well, so we didn't really go out or anything until Sunday night after we were out. Cause we were playing paintball in the mornings. We had a 7 AM match on, on Friday. And then our first match on Saturday was eight. 7 a.m. or like 8 o'clock essentially. And then Sunday, that first match was 8 o'clock again. So we were getting up crazy early every night. So it wasn't, we weren't going out and partying or anything. But Sunday when we went, when we, once we were done, we went to Old Town, which is like this, it almost reminds me of like the Jersey Shore. Like, Marcus, have you been to Old Town ever? Yeah. It reminds me of like Wildwood or something in the Jersey Shore where you've got like random like shops and like fun beachy bars and then like go-karts and stuff like that and like a like random they have like one of those slingshot like carnival ride things um a ferris wheel so we went out there i drank a lot of tequila and because i didn't have to drive anywhere um and then i kindly asked my teammates to drop me and uh one of my other teammates off at the house before they proceeded to the strip club for the rest of the evening <laughs> and then i got up at four thirty to catch our flight um so needless to say when i, I by the time i got back home it was probably about noon and I was exhausted. I slept, got home, got like plopped my suitcase down, took my shoes off and like got in bed and fell asleep. It was like, all right, I'm definitely taking a nap before I do anything else. And I woke up and it was like four 30 in the afternoon. I was like, damn. So then I get up groggily, put some stuff away, clean, take a shower, clean myself up, went to Costco for some groceries for the week. And, um, like was, <laughs> <laughs> then at like 8 30 i was like falling asleep again i was like all right screw it i'm going to bed so then went and slept the whole night until like 5 30 in the morning so i was wicked tired then uh went to work tuesday got a bunch of stuff done at work catch, catching up with stuff um at the old office and then when i got out of work tuesday i just like chilled i had like a self day didn't really talk to anybody just like used a little bit of cannabis product and like watched caught up on the Bad Batch, stuff like that. Then yesterday, I got home, did a couple things, went to Guy's Night where we watched, uh, we had some awesome, awesome sausage peppers and onions grinders that my dad made, and then um, we watched episode three of The Mandalorian. And you should have seen Nick. He ate the sausage in one bite the long way. Oh, yeah. That's my secret talent. No gag reflex. Just goes right down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even chew, just straight swallow, huh? Yeah, it's oh. not required. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, he, asked for, he he said he wishes he had two. I know, I can do usually do the double up. 
the double down, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But <laughs> Do you ever win any hot dog eating contests or I know, I should I should enter more. Usually yeah. I just do privately, but uh <laughs> <laughs> just a whole oh, pack of Oscar Myers, Myers. huh? Yeah. All to myself. Yep, definitely. <laughs> he goes for the jumbo, though. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> so, anyways. Cheese filled or? No. No. <laughs> Cheese filled hot dogs. That's just nasty. I know what you're trying to say. But, um, anyways. So, then, yes, today I went to work, came home, did some more errands and stuff, and then, boom, bam, we're recording the podcast. So, I have not really had a, t- a chance to play games, really. But, um, I am looking, like, really looking forward to PAX, and I have to go through the rest of the emails, like, as we were talking about earlier, where we get email, we're getting a lot of emails from, um, like, developers that are, or studios that have booths, saying, like, hey, here's what our game is, here's what you can expect, would you like to book some time to let us know, and here's how to book it. So, it's, um... It's a lot. So I'm going to be going through, I think I have like 80 emails I got to go through, probably half of which are, are from booths. So I want to go through and see which games I want to play and compare it to our schedule so we're not double booked and stuff like that. But So I but texted yeah. both of you. It was all, I only booked two. Um, I think behemoth, I've only, I'm only booked uh, The Behemoth two well. on Thursday and the Feudal Lands, which is that like MMO survival PvP game. Yeah. But it's, um, I'm, I'm interested in it because I think it looks cool, but I texted you. It's 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock on Thursday. I kind of okay. left everything else open so you guys can book the games you want. Um, yeah. 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 I, um, but I am going to say I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, me too. Yep, yeah, I think same. I'm, I, I uh, got confirmation today. Joey Feta, a.k.a. Frozen Cheddar in Discord, um, bought a ticket for Friday. So he's going to come up and... Ooh. Oh, that's fucking awesome. Let's yeah. go. Hopefully oh, yeah. he'll come out to dinner with us. That's what I said, because are we do? when are we doing the meetup? Are we doing that Friday? Friday. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So perfect. stay. Uh, I guess it's the time to say it, so stay tuned. I'll make a PAX, uh, PAX category in the Discord so you guys can know where the meetup is. So if you're in Boston during PAX, you can come meet up. Yes, indeed. And maybe uh, it'll just, and maybe we won't do anything official. It'll maybe it'll just be a bar. Yeah, that's listen, easy honestly, what I'm, eh, whatever. Anyways, I want to find the nerdiest gamer bar around, bro. They're all like every bar that is like on the website is going to have like bands that are only playing video game music. There's this band that only plays the eight bit music. And like one of their the like the best of the best is like when they play Metroid in Castlevania. Is it, is it like eight people, one person a bit? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. They're just playing eight bit music. I whatever. <laughs> Fuck you, that just fucked with my head. Anyways <laughs> In AIE news, um the SWOTOR mandatory fun night where the fun is mandatory but attendance is not is 9 p.m. on Tuesdays. Help Corley and the guild conquer all of the things in SWOTOR. And if you're new to SWOTOR, d- just ask them to take you to the Sarlacc pit and uh, there's a Datacron at the bottom. Trust me, it's worth the jump. And <laughs> like we sp- said earlier, Destiny 2's clan night is bumping. On Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, same time as SWOTOR. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys now, go play SWOTOR. And if you're if you're over SWOTOR for that week, just come play Destiny with us. If you're new to Destiny and you're doing your new light campaign, which is the new player experience, I'm happy to help you during, during clan night to do that or any other night to get you involved in the game. <clears throat> because right now is a great time to get into Destiny. Because it's new expansion, all the new content. It's really it's really a fun game to play. And I know I bitch and complain sometimes, but it is a lot of fun. Sometimes. And if all this sounds fun to you, go to AIE-Guild.org. Get our Discord information in the top right-hand corner of the website and ask for a guild invite. Whether or not you play Star Wars The Old Republic, Destiny 2, Guild Wars 2, Final Fantasy 14. Uh, Elder Scrolls wow. Online, World, World of Warcraft, of Warcraft. All, all the above, all of it. it. 
If you oh, play hey, it, pretty soon coming Di- Diablo Four. I heard that's coming. It is. The beta is coming a- pretty soon. If it's not out already, I'm pretty sure I saw a, a trailer for the beta. So yeah. So anyways, if you play games, we probably play it too, and we would love to have you. All right, and I know we haven't done this in a while, but Nick definitely has to pay. I sure do. So will we'll be right back. My God, what is taking him so goddamn long? Nick, hurry up, man. It's all that beer you're drinking. Come on, bro. Rose the four hoes, man. Get off Snapchat. And we're back. So today we're jumping right into working class questions. Uh, we were going to have a topic that we were going to chat about, but then uh, a lot of y'all asked asked about it in the working class questions. So well, it would have been to, redundant. And to we are we're going to PAX next week. So like, yeah, and really there hasn't been any big bombing gaming news. And I just wanted to chat with you guys. So Nick Verdon 51 says, what's your favorite dinosaur? That's a great question from a highly intelligent and handsome individual. Uh, the <laughs> favorite dinosaur, my favorite dinosaur is a velociraptor. The big claws. That's a good one. I have to actually <laughs> think about this for a second. So I if have, you want to uh, jump in, Marcus. Go oh, ahead. I will. So I have two. Uh, okay. I love the Diplodocus because he's big okay. and he just chills and like he don't give a fuck about nobody because he's bigger than everybody on the planet and he just eats leaves off trees. The other yeah. is the Dilophosaurus, which if you remember Jurassic Park, it's got the, like the two wings and it spits that shit at you. Oh, yeah. Like, I love it when shit comes out and squirts faces. I love it. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, wow. Fair enough. There's okay. a. There's a backstory of why I asked that question, which is okay. dinosaur. Because so back in college, uh like actually like freshman, sophomore year of college, Tinder was the only dating the only real dating uh app. So like it was very popular in a college, of course all the people are right there. So everybody's walking distance, it's it worked well. But so you're matching with lots of people and it's always like, All right, what the fuck do you say? Because it's just pictures on Tinder. It's not like props where you like get some backstory like oh i like books or hiking or fucking knitting or whatever so you can ask about so it's like all right what the hell do you say so i started asking hey asking like what's your favorite dinosaur and like the girls that were like actually cool would answer something be like huh i never thought about that like maybe this or something or like oh i remember i used to watch the land before time when i was little or something and you or whatever it oh would, like, yeah it was just a random weird question that like would open the doors so that was always my openers what's your favorite dinosaur so that's where that's a really from. good one yeah all right atrax what's your favorite dino I'm so happy that you mentioned the land before time, Nick, because that was, I still have the VHS set of the land before time. I'm going to keep them forever as long as I can, because that was huge nostalgia for me. Um, And so I got to go with a long neck. I don't actually know what the technical names are. I I never really studied dinosaurs when I was a kid. I just watched the movies. I think a Brontosaurus or a Diplodocus are both long necks. Okay. I'll take. I'll copy yeah. Marcus. Then he seems like he knows what he's talking about with dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, and then it's also, my son got, is obsessed with them. Got to go with the classic T Rex. Um, Fair enough. Because most people say, "Wow, wow, Marcus, pink hat, daughter, huh, sorry. Marcus?" Yeah, it was a towel. Um. That that completely derailed my train of thought. Yep. That's what I do. Okay. T Rex. Yes. So just because classic T Rex, we wouldn't have so many great Jurassic Park movies. Uh there wouldn't be a couple of great Land Before Time movies, some great sketches in Family Guy with T Rexes and I mean, I don't know. It's just like the classic dinosaur. Yeah, you know so that's a totally totally get it. Yeah, why did the uh, chicken cross the road? No one knows, but the road will have its vengeance. Why did the chicken cross the road, eh, Trax? <laughs> um, just 
that was the chicken crossing spot. So just that was the time, just walking across the road. It was minding its business. It was doing its chicken thing. Why'd the chicken cross the road, Marcus? So it didn't become fried chicken. Fair right. enough. I got That's one more one. Uh, answer with a, you don't know. Uh, why did the chicken cross the road? I don't, I don't know. To get to get to the loser's house, knock, knock. Who's there? You, you answer it, Marcus. The chicken. <laughs> I've heard that one. I thought about saying that one. I thought, nah. That's all right. It was a little contrived. That's a good one. I like it, All right. Nick Nick asks again, what's your favorite weapon that your character has used in a video game? (sighs) See, I asked these like this morning, and I don't even remember. I I am mine. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Done. So I have two. Uh, First is the Osteostriga in Destiny. Okay. Hands down. And then uh, the Corruptor Blades in Swotor. So it was like, blades. yeah, uh, it's like a sword that has like the energy, like at the end of like General Grievous's staff. Okay. Um, and you only way you can do it is by beating a boss, uh, the Corruptor oh. Zero, Corruptor Zero boss on hard mode. Yeah, that's cool. Or nightmare. Yeah, I can't remember. That's a great one. I think. Um... Favorite weapon my character use? I got a couple as well. Um, probably like a plasma rifle from Fallout, because like the gun looks really cool. It's powerful because it does energy damage and physical damage. They've got like these cathode ray tubes sticking out everywhere. You got tubes with the green stuff flying, like going through it. And when you shoot your enemies, they melt into a puddle. So like that's pretty cool. Yeah, That's that is pretty sweet. The plasma plasma rifle from from the Fallout series, but also yeah. the master sword from Legend of Zelda is always really cool. Specifically, like when I think of it, I think of like uh, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess primarily because those are the two I grew up with. But like, I don't know something about like this. Like it's just it's set up so epically in all the Zelda games. It's like you get a sword, but then you get get the master sword, and it like glows, and you can charge it up, and like. It it like it does extra damage against the evil enemies. It's just it's just cool, like this mythical thing, you know. Yeah, but that's a good one. What do you think, Atrax? I yeah, it is so hard for me to pick because I have played so many games and a right. million. I guess maybe it's more so how the uh, game plays with the weapon than the actual yeah. weapon itself, like. A couple that came to mind are the Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. I almost well, that's said a that. good one. There were wearing... so many different variations. Yeah. You're wearing a Kingdom Hearts shirt, so. Wearing a Kingdom Hearts shirt, so of course that comes to mind. Yep. Um, also, I was going to say the uh, sword from Sekiro, because you use that one sword through the entire game. And I guess you technically get the Mortal Blade later on. But still, that's the main sword that you use. And so I, I like that weapon because of how the game plays with that particular weapon. But at the end of the day, my favorite game is Neo 2. And the Switch Glaive that you can get in that game, that variant of weapon, that style is so much fun because you have like the giant heavy scythe version. That Mm -hmm. you can like swing down for heavy attacks. You can flip it to where it's like a long kind of spear pole that you can hack and slash with for your mid attacks. And then you can flick it to where it's um, the the, uh, weapon side is facing like knuckles out. So you use it as kind of like a switch. Like a punching kind of weapon? Yeah, well, it's more of like a glaive, though, right? So it's like okay. a switch glaive. Yeah, yeah, that motion, right? You do that a lot. You're hacking, um, hacking at things like a hacking, hatchet? Hack and slash, and you regain your stamina. So like, you open with your heavy attacks, and then you key sla- switch into your middle attacks. Yeah, Marcus gets it. And then right. you go into your low stance attacks to recover. I don't I just So that's the one that comes to my mind is... All the variations of that is just so great. Cool. Uh, Marcus, 
you have one of my favorite questions of all time. Oh Nick, can you please explain for all of the viewers that <laughs> didn't hear it the first time what a Division Two paintball team is? Yes. So in case you didn't hear me about 45 minutes ago, a Division Two paintball team uh, is a class, le- like a skill level uh, that we're referring to. So paintball is divided up into divisions. From best to worst, it goes professional, then semi-pro, then Division Two, II, Division Three, II, Division Four, II, Division Five, and then beginner. Um, and I play in Division Two, so, so Division so Two Division is Division Two would be like platinum. Yes, Division Two would de- definitely be like platinum, and then there's you know oh. diamond or whatever challenger above it. So yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh. I think most people would play. Most the the biggest two divisions, like numbers wise, are Division Four and Division Three, and so it's by the time you get to Division Two, you're really whittled down to a lot a lot fewer people. You're really good if you're Division Two. Yeah, yeah, you're pretty pretty darn like it's like I call it like Double A baseball. It's not Triple A, but like you're in the minor leagues, but like you're pretty pretty darn good. You know, yeah. not pro, but like Double A. Yeah. So, um, Scarlet asks, how sweaty physically? Were you while playing paintball down in the Florida heat with all that gear on? And is it more of a speed course, if that's what it's called? Uh, speedball, yes. Uh, how sweaty? Very sweaty is the is the answer to that question. Um, so if you're not familiar with what I'm referring to, I play the format that I play in is the most common format. It's the, it's the format for competitive paintball. It's actually called X-Ball, which is a form of speedball. And I think that's what Scarlett was referring to. So it's not like we're putting on camo and running around the woods like we're in the military. Um, it is on like a turf field typically or like a flat grass field with these inflatable bunkers laid out in a symmetrical pattern. Um, and the bunkers are made of like bounce house material. So there's like triangular ones that we call Doritos. There's like low to the ground, like tubular ones we call like the snakes. Um, there's like Aztec shaped ones we call with like flat top pyramids. Um, so there's all different shapes and they're all, they're laid out uniformly, uh, symmetrically, I should say. So on a grid specifically, um, so that each team has the same sort of setup on their side of the field. Did I hear that right? Did you say Doritos? Do- yes, I did. I did call the bunkers Doritos. It- yes, I did. Um, <laughs> you do that way better than I do. I well, love it. I, w- I would hope so. It's like my thing. But it um, is. So yes, that's what it is. It's five. E- so it's that's the setup. Then um, the matches themselves are. Um, for the lower divisions, it's 12 minutes total of game time. For Division 2 and up, it's 15 minutes of game time. Um, and it's 5v5 go. You shoot everybody on the other team. Then you go hit a buzzer. like an, It almost looks like a Staples easy button on the opposing team's start box. Um, and that's how you score a point. That's one point. And then the clock, the game t- clock stops at the end once you hit the buzzer. And then you have um, a limited amount of time. It's like a minute or two. It's a little more complicated than that, but it's not a lot of time. You come off the field, get clean the paint cleaned off you, whatever, reload, get some more air, and then you get back out there for the next point until the game the match is done. So that's that's the structure. But um but to answer your question about it being hot, yes, you wear like forearm and el- slash elbow pads, like these at pads that go into your forearm and elbow, and then you wear knee pads, and then it's a long sleeve jersey and long sleeve pants with cleats and stuff. But and then there's a specific, you know, headgear with headbands and stuff that's part of the fashion th- side of things. But no, you don't really wear padding for it's not for protection. The padding that you wear on your knees and then forearms and elbows is for sliding and like diving around. So mm. that's uh it can definitely get hot. But the jerseys and pants are made to be breathable, like although protective. So like I wear like a suit like an athletic shirt and then the jersey and that's it. And then you know, my pads, but so yes, you get hot, but it's not too bad. Um and thankfully, you're, the the amount of time you're actually like involved in the game, it's probably about like forty five minutes per match, roughly. So it's not yeah. too bad. You can go find shade and cool down after. But that's pretty good. Yeah. What does Quinn ask? Quinn asks, "What's a life hack that you use that actually works?" A life hack. I got one. Marcus, right. do you have a life hack over there? I'm waiting for you guys to go. Um, the one I thought of first when I read this is, um, 
I make a con. It's not really for like productivity, but it's more for like mental healthy stuff. So I make it a point to every day when I get out of my bed, I make it um, because I feel like it it like is a little like accomplishment, like check out, check the box kind of thing. It's like a little victory right in the morning. You start your day off with a win. It's like I'm fucking winning today. Boom. Bed's made right away. Let's go. And it's dumb, but it's something stupid, but it's easy. And you just like gets you in a like starts the day even if you're grumpy and tired and slept two hours you get if when you do get out of bed you make it right away it's like that's better than if you didn't you know yeah i don't know what marcus is laughing at (laughs) it's okay you will um oh there it is that's what you were drawing for so long (laughs) oh man we Um, have we have fun here at working class nerds so marcus marcus doodled a picture of a penis on a picture of me playing paintball, so it looks like I'm sucking a rather large phallic object. Um, but life so, hacks. Yeah, so I don't really have any life hacks because I feel like everything I do is like hard. But if <laughs> yeah. I had to say one, it's the life hack for me is always flush twice. Yep, <laughs> that's good advice. Yeah, don't be afraid. You know what I mean? Drop the twice. deuce, and as the last log is coming out, flush. And then it smells less, and it makes way better cleanup. Yep. And in addition to that, don't be afraid. If you know you're gonna, if you're gonna deuce, and it's gonna be a big one, throw the fan on. Do yourself a favor. Oh, you always got a fan. Yeah, but yeah. like before, not oh, after. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, beforehand for sure. If you know it, the fan's going on. Yeah. It also, yeah, like, cov- if there's other people in the house or wherever you're doing it, the fan noise helps cover up any noises you might end up making. So that's definitely better. Yep. And Febreze. Be kind. Yeah, all to, all uh... the above. Oh, like, I get. I can tack on a, this. There's a product called Poopery, P-O-O-P-O-U-R-I, that you spray I've the bowl with. And it works fucking awesome. So I guess it, like, is an oil, oily coating. It makes an oily sheen. It smells good on the surface of the water. And as you're shit goes through it it like coats it so it like locks in the 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 odor and you don't it doesn't smell bad at all so you can do some terrible things and just the pooper is you spray poopery before and you're good to go it's chipotle away um, exactly chipotle away <laughs> exactly it's really uh, they make they oh, make man. travel size ones too that you can like bring with you or if you like you're going over like a date's house for something bro just, like, listen quick <sighs> When we're in that hotel room, I'm going to drop the fattest deuce and not shut the door and not turn on the fan. I know. That's I'm going to go find ice cream at that point. Yeah. We're, we'll just leave. You're going to get a shit <laughs> shit scream uh, shit cream sandwich. We'll yeah, we'll wait yeah. for a while. Um this is a repeat be, for- I, My oh. life hack personally oh. this this doesn't work for everybody, but for me, uh save yourself like 200 bucks. Just throw your mattresses on the floor and just sleep like that. Just own it. Super comfortable. And uh, yeah, you save money and space. Not a chance. And time. Well, I respectfully disagree with that, but if it works for you, then I'm happy for you. Yeah. Nice, Marcus. There you go. <laughs> um, that's what, this that's is what Marcus re- thinks of that idea. Uh, I guess this so. Is, this is a repeat from Doritos. Uh, what are you looking forward to most about PAX East? Um, Ooh, that's a good question. I think, um, honestly, I, I really like the game demos when the devs are right there explaining stuff to you and they're really passionate about it. Like, for example, like, like, uh, I don't know. As we are, it's. I keep going back to this example at PAX because it's the game, a game we played them a lot of when we had the developers on the show and everything. But like Norm's Night in the Cave, that bowling platformer. Like I'm, I'm terrible at platformers. But like the developers, like being over your shoulder, explaining the like slingshot mechanic and like how they ended up co- like coming up with that and like how they made they, you know, basically made the whole game around it and what the theme is and how that how that developed in the art style they're like explaining this thing that they worked on as you're playing it yeah it's it's a different level of like intimacy with games than you normally get when you just play at home to like yeah. have that like it's like watching a dvd or a movie or whatever with like the the director's commentary on you know what i mean mm-hmm. 
at the same time, but the director's like right behind you. Like, oh, see, in that shot, like this guy kept farting in the corner. That's why that extra's making that face or something, you know? Right. Like, that's cool. Like, I can't, I'm pumped for that. I have uh, three things. Okay. Um, first is, first and foremost, be, beyond anything else, it's I'm going to be hanging out with Nick and A-Tracks for like three days. That's in true. In person, like, we chilling. That's like, great. There's, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, like, I'm looking forward to the most for that. Second is I am really excited to buy a new keyboard. I'm getting a new keyboard. So I have the Logitech Pro Series, and I don't know what to do. I've taken the keys off. I've cleaned them. The W and S and D key stick, and I'll hit W once, and it'll click three times. It drives me bonkers. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I wish I could say that I jerked off all over it. Like, I've cleaned this fucking thing. Like, um, sorry, Atrex was showing, like, the jerking motion. The, the shake weight uh, like, motion? Yeah, the shake weight. What? So, yeah. I was throwing dice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you were throwing knuckle children. Anyways, um, <laughs> so my point is, um, I really want to get a nice mechanical keyboard and... The last time we were at PAX was in 2019. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Um, in a galaxy that, far, far away. Yeah. Uh, they had some pretty rad mechanical keyboards. So that's something like I'm thinking about buying that I really want to do. And then the third thing is like, I feel like I'm getting a dream interview because one of my favorite games, I don't talk about it too often, is Castle Crashers. Like, that was my ultimate party game. Like, some people play Mario Party, some play Mario Kart, some have their, like, whatever their land parties might have been Goldeneye. My ultimate party game was Castle, Castle Crashers, and they're coming out with a new game, and we have a interview with them. Like, that, like, every time I go to PAX, I bring the kids home stuffies from Castle Crashers, the behemoth. So, I am super looking forward to that. Hey, Trax? Uh A lot of things that you both are looking forward to as well, hanging out with you guys, visiting the East Coast, all of that good stuff. The best coast? Least coast. Um, wow. Well, it's got the L, you know. Anyway. East Coast doesn't have an L in it. No, if you give it the L, and it becomes the least coast. Yeah, but we Until don't take here. You, you take the L. Our sure. Walmarts are open. So are ours. I don't get it. That's fine. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, I have, since I was young, always wanted to kind of interview game developers and be that person to be able to go from game to game and check all the new stuff out. So being able to do this with both of you is super super awesome and also this is the biggest gaming convention i've ever been to so it's it's just a ton of excitement for me hell I'm, yeah I'm all around excited there's a lot of great stuff there yeah i'm, I'm de definitely super excited um atrax i think I, i'm I, one little side thing i'm like interested in seeing is like when we went in 2019 did we go thursday friday saturday marcus is that what it was or maybe even friday saturday sunday i think we went friday saturday sunday but like saturday and sunday were it might have been just saturday friday saturday but saturday and sunday are so much more packed than friday was like saturday you can barely even move so like the fact that we're going thursday friday is perfect we can actually yeah. go around, see everything. Then Saturday, we can just hit a couple things that we want, wanted to clean up with or whatever. But um, I think it, it'll be interesting to see the crowd differences on the different days. You'll you'll appreciate it. Um, next question. Is that everything? I think so, right? Yeah. Moving on. Rigor Morty asks, uh, do you have any go-to songs that you listen to ahead of time? Sorry, ahead of gaming to get you in the mood for gaming. Uh, current favorites of mine are Linkin Park, Somewhere I Belong, an ACDC shoot a thrill. Oh, and by the way, I'm still deciding on a Mass Effect 2 class. Very good. Mass Effect 2 is awesome. 
Uh, that's probably my favorite game of all time, and I like the soldier class because I feel like Mass Effect, you, Commander Shepard is a soldier. Like, I don't feel like he's, like, shooting lasers out of his hands. I feel like he's straight up infantry. Yeah, that's. I think that's yeah. what I picked, too. He's really, like, a shooty kind of guy. Yeah. But... um. I'll go first on the go-to songs. Like, it's hard for me to say that because, well, I play this mix off of uh, YouTube every stream before before it because it gets me pretty excited. But I don't really listen to music to get me pumped up to game unless I'm streaming just because I don't really want to listen to the in-game music. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm kind of the same way where I don't usually listen to music to get pumped up, but I will give you my like current favorite pump up song. It's a tech house song technically by Dom Dalla, but it has like the like hockey, like intro music kind of vibes or like jock jams CDs from like the nineties or whatever vibes to it. It's called Miracle Maker by Dom Dalla. Um, Miracle Maker. And- you know, M I R A C L E M A K E R, and then the artist name is Dom D O M D O L L A. Dom Dalla. Yeah, I think it's a. And Marcus has got it. Da- Marcus, we're gonna get copyrighted. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, fi- Marcus! You have fifteen seconds. No, you have seven. I don't. Well, I didn't play seven seconds. No, no, I'm just saying. I don't want to argue with a lawyer about it. <laughs> but, but exactly. That was indeed the intro to, to Miracle Maker, though. Um, Atrax, how about you? Uh, I have, so I wouldn't say get in the mood because I am always in the mood to play video yes, games. Yes, you are. Right. Uh, but I, there are a few gaming or a few songs that I always listen to at least, I would say, once when I'm playing games. Usually I'll throw a Dance Gavin Dance playlist on because they're my favorite band ever. Headhunter, definitely. By Dance Gavin Dance, definitely a song to get you in the mood and ready to just like go in there and destroy some noobs. Uh, before I play League of Legends, Worlds Collide by the League What's of Legends. What's the name of the song? Uh, which one? The one you just said, Dance Gavin Dance. Uh, Headhunter. And then, yeah. I'd say that's pretty much it. Those those two will really those will really get you in the mood. Yeah, there you go. That that'll get you in the gaming mood, for sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. Uh, and then NF and Eminem. I mean, I'll like I said, Dance Gavin Dance, NF, Eminem. Throw those playlists on when playing video games. Just sit back and let it rip. Let it rip. Great question. <laughs> Sylvie, or whomever. I'm Please. just going to hop in. I haven't asked one in a while, don't think. Oh, I don't my know. bad. No, it's Later. okay. Sylvie asks, what is your favorite beef cut? Uh, ooh, good question. I rib like eye. a, I can't remember, I can never remember if I prefer ribeye or sirloin. But I, it's one of those two. Uh, so mine go- Ribeye is my favorite. Yeah, so ribeye. my favorite cut is a bone-in ribeye. Bone-in ribeye is great. Mm-hmm. I like, see, like, I definitely prefer to talk about steak cuts. I, my go-to when I buy steak is usually a porterhouse because I do also like a New York strip. But if I'm going to buy steak, it usually means I'm cooking for a girl in some capacity. And a porterhouse has is the T-bone steak with a New York strip on one side. And then um, the other side of the bone is the uh, filet. It's like a filet mignon. So usually what I'll do is I'll cut off that side and give the gal that I'm entertaining um, the filets because they're more tender but less like beef flavor. But then the New York strip side, I'll eat because uh, it's more beef flavor, which is what I actually care about, and I'm slightly less tender. But yeah. so I usually value that like beef flavor that comes from the fat content. That's why my favorite favorite is like a nice ribeye because it's got more fat content going on. Also... Close second is a flank steak grilled carne asada style. I do those, like that a lot. All those, uh, like, was it lime and cilantro and all that good stuff? Oh, yeah. 
Yes, indeed. Um, so, go ahead, Atrax. Oh, I was just going to say, if you could have a specific superhero's power set from Marvel, and I'm also going to add same question for DC, so both Marvel and DC, whose yep. power set would it be? Uh, off the top of my head in Marvel, I'm going to pick Doctor Strange. I think he's my favorite. That'd be cool to be like, the, you know, the Sorcerer Supreme. They get a dope-ass cape and everything. Yeah. yeah. Literally, um, like, destroyed your entire universe in one of the multiverses. Yeah, like, I'm so strong that I accidentally did that. By absorbing <laughs> yourself, too. <laughs> That's pretty oh, cool. Good times. That's a lot going on. Um, yeah. For DC, I don't know. It's hard to not pick Superman, you know? Like, he can fly. He's got x-ray vision. The And I'm trying to think of, like, my favorite. Oh, no, just kidding. 100% I picked the Flash. Easy peasy. Like super speed makes you able to when you can when you're that fast you can literally time travel, so I picked I picked the Flash. That's great, Marcus. Oh, you're gonna let me go. Um, so I'm gonna go with Tony Stark for Marvel. Good call. Um, and some people would say, well, why don't you say Iron Man? Well, because you know Tony Stark built the Iron Man armor and blah blah blah. Don't need yeah. to go into all that. So yeah, Tony Stark. And DC, man, it's it's kind of tough for me to say, too. Cyborg would be kind of cool. It'd be cool to literally be a robot. That's true. Uh, or at least mostly robot. You could be but, a video game. Right, exactly. But Flash is a really good option, too. Close second for me. Marcus, how about you? Um, Iron Man is option one option two is it's kind of selfish i'd like to be thor because man i would love to be with jane (laughs) natalie portman is perfect she is smoking all right and then if i was a dc i would be shazam shazam i love that dude all right he's got all the moves i'm surprised you didn't pick black adam because isn't black adam shazam just better no, I oh. like Shazam. All right, yeah. fair enough. Uh, so be also- a- go ahead. No, go ahead. You no, read- you go. No, you've I'm been done. picking your nose. You haven't been re- reading any of these. Okay, Intel or AMD? <laughs> Intel. 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 Intel or die. And also, somebody else. A graphics asks- card, AMD or Nvidia. <laughs> Nvidia. 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 I. So I will say. I have heard rumors that now things are slowly changing because AMD is getting better. But my only experience has been with Intel and NVIDIA, and it has worked for me flawlessly so far, so I see no reason to switch over. I compare it. Okay, listen. This is how I compare AMD to to Intel, okay? Or AMD to NVIDIA. Whether they can say it's better or not, I don't care. Have you ever bought a blank T-shirt from Walmart and a blank T-shirt from Target and wash it five times? The Target yeah. T-shirt is still in great shape. Yeah, and the Walmart one's not. Exactly. Like, yeah. I'm not saying that it's not good. I just know that every time I've bought AMD, I've had it for a year, maybe a year and a half, and it is shit. It's shit. There and. Mm. And once, like, and I feel like once you have something that you're comfortable with, I'll give an example. My Logitech mouse. I fucking love Logitech. Yeah. Love it. Same. I, like, my Logitech mouse is the best fucking mouse. You can tell me how good Corsair is. You can tell me how good all of the others are. I'm never going to buy a mouse that is not Logitech. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. My This mouse is dope. Yeah. You know what Thanks. I mean? I'm, so like, I'm, I'm with you. G502 yeah. all the way. That's exact. Yeah, thanks for the recommendation because I, I I like this a lot. Oh, I love this question. Can I just do this last one from Sovi? Yeah. Home Depot, Lowe's, or Harbor Freight for tools? I'm gonna let you two go first. Oh, well, you got to pick the depot. But I'm also not. I don't work in this space like Marcus does. So yeah, I admittedly, if I know that I need a tool, I'll just buy it off Amazon. But. Then lazy me, if I need it immediately, we'll drive to whatever's closest, which is usually Home Depot. 
but I, I check online if they have it first. So I, I right. guess it just depends on what I need and if they have it or not. But it's usually Home Depot if I'm actually going to one of the three. Because Harbor Freight for me is super far away. I've never even seen a Harbor Freight. Maybe it's a West Coast thing. No, it's uh, here. Nick oh, just doesn't here? buy tools. Oh, no, that's I, yeah, fair. I'm not, I don't. I don't live in that space. You know. Yeah. Um. So I buy I, I buy some stuff at Home Depot, but if I'm going to buy tools, it's called Festool. F e s t o o l. Google it, and you'll see it's German made. And I get it from a store called Woodcraft, uh, or I order it online. It's all Fun. dust free. It's it's all dust free tools. It's they're all attached to vacuums, which is really cool. And nice. fun fact, Marcus noticed in this, this week's episode of The Mandalorian, um, when Dr. Pershing is gathering tools from the lab, he has a white box. That's actually a Festool box. Huh, that's that they cool. paint they painted like white and silver for Star Wars colors. Usually it's that's like awesome. gray and lime green for Festool. But like in that box, just that case empty from Festool is like hundred and thirty dollars that they had. It's just a plastic box. Yeah. It's called a <laughs> sustainer. Yeah. Just wonder, like they don't call the vacuums vacuums, they're dust dust extractors. I wonder if there's some poor like scene uh scene constructor that's just missing their fest tool toolbox. That's cause it just got <laughs> spray painted white and emptied. <laughs> and they're like, Hey, wait a minute, where'd it go? And the Is the it, company's like, We need this. It's perfect for the scene. Yeah. That's funny. Probably. So yeah, if you go back and watch um episode three of Mandalorian again, check out the box that uh Dr. Pershing uses to like gather his the lab equipment. It's a it's a festival box. That's cool. But, yeah. That was really uh, that was a cool Easter egg Marcus pointed out while you're we watching. Um Duft asks uh, what is was your childhood obsession? For example, dinosaurs, trains, cars. Is it still a thing for you now, or what is your current obsession? I can uh, go first. Yeah, I can go because this is easy. So my childhood obsession was comic books. Yeah, and it is still a thing for me. Like I obviously don't go to the comic book shop as much as I want to, but I mm-hmm. fucking love reading comic books. So yes, that's still a thing. And my current obsession is. Um, it's, it's, it's torn between two, which is podcasting or, um, playing video games. Solid. Atrax? That's great. Uh, mine's always been gaming, like, since, I think even before I was born. Ben Sense, Ben Sense, Ben Sense? Uh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Ben Sense. Ben Sense forever. (laughs) All the time. Um, uh, but yeah, gaming, hardcore gaming all the time, still a thing. You know, hearing this, Nick, Nick, we might actually see a tracks have an anxiety attack at PAX. Cause there's so many games to play. There's so many games. Like you're just like, it's, like oh, it's hundreds oh, it's, and hundreds of games. Yeah. Like it's overwhelming. <laughs> you're everywhere you go. It's a new game on a screen. Like we yeah. might actually see a tracks meltdown. It's a, it's like a. It's akin to a, a casino at times. It's like, yes. like let's go. Next one. Yeah. We're, We're done. Like, let's go. We got to move. Come on. Ten, ten seconds. Let's go. And then so, I'm yeah, going to get to the hotel room and pass out. Oh, oh 100%. Yeah. Especially Thursday night because you're like not really sleeping on the flight in in the morning. And then after you all the work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, my childhood obsession, I think. It's probably video games, but I'll, um, like early childhood, like Pokemon on like a, a, the Game Boy and stuff like that. I was I would mm. play the crap that's out gaming, of that. yeah, gaming. And then um, later in child, you know, as I twelve and up, essentially, I got into paintball, and then that stuck with me, and I'm still doing that as well. But gaming, yeah, so gaming and paintball, and yes, nice, I'm still doing both. I I will say when I have somebody else who enjoys playing tennis. I will start getting into that obsession in watching pro tennis matches and yeah. trying to get better. I have a custom tennis racket with custom strings and all that stuff. So that was a childhood nice. obsession too. But now I don't have anybody to play with and it's too rainy here in Oregon to enjoy playing by yourself. You know, like I don't yeah. even want to be outside. So uh, yeah, I will say tennis too. 
Nice. All right. Last set of questions. Dorito a- Doritos asks, uh, what is your favorite board game? <sighs> favorite board game. Oh, crap. Hey, I don't Jax. remember the name of it. So I have a favorite board game, and I, I lump card games into board games as well. So my too. favorite official board board game is Settlers of Catan. Good and call. And then my official board slash card game is called Dominion. Dominion's cool too. Yeah. I, like I, Dominion. I have two favorite board games. Uh one is called Mice of Mystics. Yep. Mice and Mystics is awesome. I was, That's I was a good one. That too. And then the my other one is Operation. Operation? I forgot and about dude, Operation. I, dude, I play that shit with my kids all the time and I love it. And you know, yeah, dude, I want. I, I kind of want to buy that just to like get inebriated and then try to play. <laughs> dude, it's an awesome like. It's like an awesome date game for when somebody comes over your house. Yeah, it's like you're gonna be like, "Hey, I just picked up a, ge- a board game. You want to play it?" And they're gonna be like, "Uh, sure." And then you pull out Operation, and their childhood is just gonna come out in them. Like I'm it's gonna, insta fun. I'm gonna buy Operation right fucking now. Yeah, dude, it's such an awesome. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you right now. It's not easy. Pulling the no, pencil no. out is tough as fuck. And my yeah. kids make fun of me so hard or I'll be going to grab it and I'll be all gentle and they'll hit my hand and they'll be like, you are good, daddy. So. $15 this is a great, this is a great purchase. Um, my favorite board game. I mean, I'm going to say operation now, but I was going to say coup because it's actually a card game where mm. you like lie to each other about like who, what card you have and stuff. Yeah. Coup is yeah. fun. Uh, I think it's like two to really it's like three to six players. It's better if you have six. Um, Coup is very fun. One, I will interject to one game I have very fond memories of, but I wouldn't say is my favorite is Sorry. Oh yeah, because that game spawned so many funny moments from my friends. Because yep. you know it's like Sorry, the game that teaches you to be a dick. Because yep. <laughs> it just it's all about just gooning your friends. And I've had so many times my friends literally just flipped the board because they're so mad. And it, oh, man, so many times rolling on the floor was sorry. I, I played a lot of Connect Four and chess as well. I, have a lot, I, I enjoy board games a lot. You know who's super into board games is Joey Feta, a.k.a. Mr. Frozen Chetta. He loves board games. He has a ton. Him and his wife play all the time, but. Anywho, Doritos asked our last question of the evening. Best restaurant for chicken wings? See, so like, I, I'm a wing guy, so I can answer this. I was, like, Mar- I was, gonna, I was just going to say Marcus has a better answer because I'm not a bone-in wing guy. I prefer boneless. So, so like, my, my yeah. fate, well, it doesn't matter that. So a wing is great, but it's the sauce that makes it. Yep. Yeah. So I love the buffalo. I love buffalo. Like. I yeah. like it spicy. I don't want to like, I want it to burn my mouth, but like, I don't want it to hurt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I like the heat, but so Buffalo wild wings, medium sauce is the best wing sauce on the planet to me, but I haven't been there in a long time. There's a place, a local place near me called Ebies. and Ebies. yeah. And when we got fitted for our tuxes, yeah, we all went there afterwards uh, for my wedding, and I watched my buddy Rick G eat like four pounds of boneless wings. Oh, and their wings, yes, Dang. yes, and oh. their wings are like oh each God, wing is like a chicken, chicken t- breast. Yeah, they're fucking ginormous, and this dude fucking took it oh down. But I, I but, remember that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and, but like Buffalo Wild Wings, their wing itself isn't fantastic, but the sauce is what makes it. Yeah. And I'm a wing guy. I think. Um, and if anybody, if either of you say Hooters, I'm just exiting out of this call. No, come on. Um, no, I think I'm a boneless wing guy. So on, like what I used to get a lot was wings over because they would deliver at Yukon. Yeah. Which is always They're solid. They have really good flavors. I like a lot of the. They had like a spicy barbecue. I really liked. And like a like a sweet spicy chili sauce that's like kind of yeah. like a tot Thai, whatever you call that sauce. That's yeah. good too. But also Red Rock Cafe in um Mansfield, Connecticut, like is right right near Yukon and also right by um 
the paintball field I practice at. So it's they have e their wings are enormous. Like if you get five, like you're you're very likely to get take home leftovers. That's how big they are. Um, and they have like a million sauces. Same deal. Sauces are all very very good. So those are my two faves. A tracks. That's what's up. Yeah, I I kind of agree with Marcus. Around here, Buffalo Wild Wings seems to have the most consistent, consistently good wings, and yeah. they deliver. But there is a truck down, a food truck. Ooh, that is kind of downtown, not downtown Portland, but downtown. I don't even know. Maybe Gresham. Anyway, a suburb around here. Uh, they have like a little collection of food carts and there's one particular cart that sells wings and fries and all sorts of other stuff and their wings are really, really good. And they have a good, uh, like, I think they call it a spicy honey barbecue, but it, it's kind nice. of that it's honey barbecue. So it's sweet, but it has the heat behind it. Ha, ha, so, yeah. 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 Like. I, I imagine, Marcus, you would really like it, even though you're traditional buffalo. You oh. would like that it's flavorful with the heat coming behind it. You know, like I had a, perfect. I had a wing that is like a boneless wing that was just teriyaki, and it was fucking fantastic. Ooh, yeah. And like, teriyaki wings are good, Like, too. that's great. Or like golden barbecue. Golden barbecue. Amazing. I would always get golden barbecue from uh, Wings Over. 99. But like, 90, 99 good, yeah. also. Great. Yeah. So like, uh, but uh, wings are my favorite thing. Um, I love wings. The, the last thing I want to say is you were right. Atrax. I just got notification. The Diablo four beta preload is live right now and it goes live this weekend. And the Sweet. open beta is 84 gigs ahead of a three day beta this weekend. So pre-order the and it includes and the first beta. world boss. Huh? I said pre-order the game and get your beta key. Which I it sucks ass because like the cheat code used to be so if you have a PlayStation five or Xbox and Diablo four is coming to it, go to Amazon, pre order it, you'll get the beta key and then cancel the pre order. But you can't do that with a PC because you have to buy it through Battle.net. Right. So you have yeah. to pre purchase it no matter what. And it sucks because like you're like, what if I want to try it before I buy it? You just they charge wait. you but they charge you for the game. That's how they get you. Yeah. Like, oh, it's an open beta. Well, not really, because you have to buy the game in order to do it. That's true. Listen, nerds community, if you have any questions you want us to answer, ask in the Discord. We have a tab called a tab called Working Class Questions. Anything goes in there. Ask away. We'll usually post a day or two before on the guest. And just remind everybody about it. Thank you, everybody who submits questions every single week. And look for a prize question next month. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Working Class Class Nerds. Nerds.